My uh, first guest is someone you all know, a gentleman who does not need any big build-up. He has been a major, major figure in the entertainment business for many years. As a matter of fact, tomorrow night, he celebrates his 25th anniversary in show business, and he'll celebrate it on a, another network. <laughs> as lots of people seem to do. Uh, anyway, <laughs> anyway, Ed will be at 9.30. It's a 90-minute special tribute to this gentleman and his achievements as an entertainer. It's a great kick to have him here. Would you welcome Johnny Cash? <laughs> and roll Cause I've got so much country in my soul Oh, but I am a different man for loving you And I take a shot at what you ask me to And baby, I will rock and roll with you If I have to story. Johnny Carson, thank you so much for asking us to be on the show. It's really a pleasure after all this time to be back with you. And we'd like to do a song that we're just uh, going to release this coming week, a kind of a patriotic flag waver. And I believe the time is right in this country for a little old fashioned flag waving. See, I do it too, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> it's called The Song of the Patriot. I'm a flag-waving patriotic Nephew of my Uncle Sam A rough-riding, fighting Yankee man 
I love mom and apple pie and the freedoms that we all enjoy across this beautiful land. I've worked hard and I'd fight hard for the old red, white and blue. And I'll die a whole lot harder if it comes to where I have to. I'm a flag waving patriotic nephew of my Uncle Sam, a rough riding, fighting Yankee man. And when I see old glory waving, I think of all the brave men that have fought and died for what is right and wrong. And when I see old glory burning, my blood begins to churnin', and I could do some fighting of my own. I don't believe in violence, I'm a God-fearing man, but I'd stand up for my country just as long as I could stand, cause I'm a flag-waving patriotic nephew of my Uncle Sam, a rough riding, fighting Yankee man. Flag-waving, patriotic Nephew of my Uncle Sam A rough riding, fighting Yankee man And I enjoy the liberty Of being what I want to be And achieving any goal that I can I was taught to turn the other cheek But Teddy used to say Walk soft and pack a big stick but never walk away And I'm a flag-waving patriotic Nephew of my Uncle Sam A rough riding, fighting Yankee man And when I see old glory waving I think of all the brave men That have fought and died For what is right and wrong And when I see old glory burning My blood begins to churning and I could do some fighting of my own But I love all my brothers And I'm proud of our birth We've got the greatest country here On God's green earth And I'm a flag-waving patriotic Nephew of my Uncle Sam A rough riding, fighting Yankee man commercial and we'll be right back and talk with John a while and then June's going to join us. Thanks, Al. And your wife, June, is, let me tell them about our first meeting. Good. I have not seen you for a number of years since you were on The Tonight Show back in New York. And the time before we met was 25 years ago, almost this year. Yes, it was. And it was one of those strange, little did we know what would happen to either one of us at that time. I was doing a show for CBS, and it was uh, 55 and 56. And the show went off the air, and I had no job. And I went back to New York to do a show called Who Do You Trust, where I met Ed. And I had bought a house out in Encino <laughs> on Havenhurst Avenue. Right. Does that sound familiar? Right. And it was the first home I had ever owned in my life. And um, I mortgaged everything I had to buy this house. And it was, I can still remember the price. There are certain things in your life that you always remember because it's kind of a turning point. $42,000, which was a lot of money in 1955. And it wasn't a particularly large house, but a nice, comfortable house. So I went back to New York, and I said, we have a buyer for your home. And I said, who, who's that? And they said, Johnny Cash. And I said, well, who's Johnny Cash? Well, he's a singer. You came in, and you bought the house, and I think I'd put the swimming pool in, and you, right. you must have bought it for less than $50,000, right? I did. I bought it for less than fifty, and it was fifty-eight or fifty-nine that I bought it from. Right. Now, let me tell you what happened. Last year, I got from a real estate broker who knew that you would live there and I'd live there, the listing on that house that was up for sale just to show you what has happened in 24 years. And the house, I saw a picture of the house, and it says, former celebrity's estate. <laughs> now, when I bought it, the guy didn't tell me it was an estate. It's like, 
It's like a third of an acre, you know, where you say have room for yard. It was a little <laughs> small. Former executive's home mentioned my name and your name, and I'm going to ask you to guess what they were asking for that house last year. Mm, 200000 Well, you went a little bit over. $177,000. Well, I was shooting high because, yeah. you know, it's California, you know. <laughs> Never I, thought I could afford a $177,000 house, either, folks. Do we, you remember that meeting? I sure do. I remember coming into that house uh, to sign the papers, and there All you right. were, and the real estate man, and we signed the papers. I think it was something around $45,000. Yeah. And what we really liked about it was you had in the bedroom for the children. My boys were very small. Your, your boys yeah. were small, and my little girls were small. And uh, you had... had um, uh, Mickey Mouse and clowns and all kind of cartoon characters painted right. on the walls. Right. And the little girls just loved that. And we really had a nice home there. I loved it very much. Yeah. But that, that was a fascinating story with it was, the way people's yeah. lives kind of intertwine. Well, you got awfully hot there and uh, raised the price of that house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you living there might have helped too. Uh, what was your first singing job? Do you remember back that far? Your very first, what you call, might call professional engagement? Well, my first. Uh, in 1955 is when I started recording right. Sun Records in Memphis. Right. And my first uh, uh, you know, engage engagement of any importance to myself and my career was with Elvis Presley right. at the Overton Park Shell in Memphis. And it was, this was in August of 55. Yeah. And then uh, it said down at the bottom of the ad, extra, Johnny Cash. Extra. And uh, yeah, <laughs> way down at the bottom in real small letters. And then uh, Elvis hired me to uh, and the Tennessee Two, who were my band, the two guys, right. to open his show for a series of tours in Texas right. and the Mid South, and we worked with Elvis for about uh, three or four months. Yeah, that must have been exciting years. <laughs> it really was. You know, there's a there's, a, there's such a myth about the Grand Old Opry House. I mean, that really is the home, I guess, of um, every major uh, country western star. Mm -hmm. um, I suppose everybody who starts eventually hopes in that field to play the Grand Old Opry House. I think so. It was yeah. a it's always a country boy's dream, I think. Yeah. And as a child, I listened to the Grand Ole Opry, and then when I graduated from high school, uh, it was on the agenda of our senior trip, you know, to visit the Grand Ole Opry in Nashville and tour right. the Smoky Mountains. And when I sat there in that audience at night, when I was 18 years old, I knew one day I was going to be on that stage. It just had to be with all the rest of the country singers and musicians. And I finally made it in 1956. I was a guest on the Grand Ole Opry. It's, it's great to realize a boyhood dream, though, to it say really someday was. I would like to be up there. Mm -hmm. You've gotten this question, I know, a lot of times, John, but country music, western music, bluegrass, folk, it's all kind of intertwined. But would you say that the kind of basis for a lot of that is gospel? It seems to have a lot of gospel origins. Right, I think so. Uh, one of the first groups or first popular names in country music was my wife's mother and her... her uh, brother-in-law and sister-in-law, the original Carter family, right. 1927, 28, 29, right. 30. They were the top name in country music, along yeah. with Jimmy Rogers, who came along a little, uh, little later on, and then Gene Autry. Yeah. For a five-year period there, it was the Carter family, Jimmy Rogers, and, and Gene Autry. Right. And the songs that they sang then, songs like uh, uh, Wabash Cannonball right. and Wildwood Flower, uh, which is probably the most well-known country song melody or maybe any melody of any kind all over right. the world. Right. We played Prague, Czechoslovakia. We played all over Europe recently. And uh, the audience knows all these songs. That's tremendous when you go to Europe and find out they're very current on what's going on back here. They, they really, well, they hear them on American Forces Network and right. BBC and Radio Free Europe. Yeah. We're going to take a break. Then we're going to ask June to come out and talk a little bit. And then we're going to do something together. So stay where you are. We'll be right back in just a minute. About the famous Carter family, I think we'd all like to meet your wife. Would you welcome June Carter Cash? June! Nice to meet you. Well, it's nice to meet you. Yeah. I understand you worked together, um, but the one time, uh, we were working together before you got married, right? Yes, uh, we really were. Uh, I didn't work with him, you know, when right. I first met him. I met him first, I guess, about 1956. Mm -hmm. I've been going away to school in New York City. I was right. trying to be a, 
an actress, and I was going to dramatic school there. Right. But I was like John. I was in the meantime working with Elvis Presley now and then, and right. Elvis kept dragging me into these little places uh, to listen to. No, no. Yeah. no Explain this to your husband. No, no, no. You, you all have got it all wrong. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean you know how they had little jukeboxes yeah. everywhere. You know, well he kept dragging me into these places and playing the jukebox, and he kept playing a song called "Cry, Cry, Cry." And I said, uh, well, that sounds pretty good, but it was just barely boom, chicka, boom, chicka. And it was only a, a guitar, an electric guitar and a drum. Uh, I mean, a bass, that's all. It wasn't even a drum on that. Yeah. But Elvis could only tune his guitar if he could hear the first line of cry, cry, cry. So I that said, well, who is, who is that? And he said, that's Johnny Cash. Right. So he kept, uh, we kept working these tours, and I kept listening to this man, Johnny Cash. And, I remember one night I had come home to the Grand Ole Opry to work. I worked there 17 years, but this was a long time before that, like 1956. And uh, well, I'm standing uh, right, to go, I'm going to go on the stage, and this tall, kind of uh, slim guy walks up to me with this nice little grin, and he said, uh, Oh, I'm Johnny Cash. <laughs> no, it's down here. Hi, I'm Johnny Cash. You got way down there. Right, way down there. <laughs> He's got a vibrato you can throw a cat through when he gets those low registers. <laughs> well, and so you said, my God, I've met the man. And I met, I met him then, but you see, life changes a lot. Like you all have changed a lot since yeah. you lived in the same house. Right. At that time, I was really married to somebody else, and he was too. Only we were, I mean, I was separated. Only right. I was living in New York, only he wasn't separated. And then <laughs> it was a mess. I know those problems. <laughs> You're talking to the man who can understand that. No, <laughs> no you all have got it all mixed up. We got that you, all wrong, too, huh? Oh, wrong, see. see? I didn't see him again for a long time. Oh. I just saw him kind of passing through. I don't know why we didn't work together. It was probably a lucky thing. Yeah. But we didn't. He kept going his way, and I kept going my way. And I'd worked show dates over here, and Johnny Cash would work show dates over here, but I... Always thought he was kind of nice, you yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> so, but uh, I, he just kept on. So how'd you finally get together? Well, <laughs> well um, <laughs> believe it or not, it, no, it's it's going to take me a while to tell you. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I wish you'd quit staring at this. It's not going to fly away. No, I think it's very pretty. I like it. <laughs> no, it's it's, and I don't want anybody getting on me about this either because I've got its head wrapped all the way around here and as soon as the show's over, it's going to fly The whole away. thing goes yeah. on, I think. No, honest to goodness, uh, that, at that time, uh, I didn't really work with Johnny Cash until December 1961. And there were, we did a show together in Dallas, Texas, and I had uh, two little girls and I was working about 10 days a month. and. Uh, uh, it was a very nice show that we had together. I enjoyed working with him, and I really was a fan of Johnny Cash's. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, his manager, uh, Saul Holoff at the time, and John talked about uh, maybe speaking to me to see if I would work some of the shows with them starting in 1962. And so they bought the 10 days I had every month, and it right. saved me from trying to get my own 10 days every month, which was kind of hard. That's all I worked because I wanted to stay with my kids, you right. know? So I started working with Johnny Cash then in 1962, and uh, we worked together for a long time. We right. fought a lot in the beginning <laughs> because uh, he wasn't quite the man that I married, the Johnny Cash that I started that's, working with. He always tuned his guitar too, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so how'd you finally get together? Well, <laughs> Oh, it, oh, it took us a it. while. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I got that impression. It took a little while. There. No, it, no, it really did because, you see, it was a shock to me because back during that time, uh, Johnny Cash was really a great entertainer. I've never seen him when he didn't do a wonderful show, but... Back during that time, um, John was kind of mixed up. He had a drug problem. I knew him uh, at that you time. Might have, yes, you might have. You knew he did one of your shows. You remember it was I a bad show. Never the group came on. and uh -huh. The group was a little mellow, I remember that night. Yes. <laughs> a little mellow. No, uh, I, he's never done a bad performance in his oh, life. Oh, yes, he has, honey. No, even on when you Johnny were messed Carson up. Show. Well, on Johnny Carson's show in New York City. He said, uh, well, you tell him. 
What? Tell them what, honey. That's the bad show you did. That's why we no, came no, back. No, let's it get off of that and go to something else. Off. Let's get off of that. I wanted to him tell about the bad shows. No, oh, that's, long that's long. a lot. Well, that's all over with, because right. see, we're back. It only took 18 years. Right. And so, uh, <laughs> uh, actually, um, uh, we fought a lot in the beginning because mm. uh, my mother, well, you see, I was raised uh, with this very um You're going Puritan. backwards. You're going I backwards. Have, <laughs> I have to explain it to you. Oh, I know okay. how we got together. It's going to take me a while, okay, and you should have known better than to give me on this certainly. I'm sorry, Jill. Uh, so you were born where? Well, <laughs> you see... <laughs> I was born right near Mother Maybell. Right, Mother Maybell. <laughs> no, I was born in Virginia, but I'm going to try to get you where you're trying to get okay. me to faster right. than you ever I'm thought told. I'd get okay. there. Okay, all right. You see, um, I've, um, now you've got me doing it. No. <laughs> no. Uh, anyway, uh, you're working together. And we were working together, working together, and we did. We we fought a lot fought because a lot. John was messed up, and he wasn't really quite doing the kind of shows I, I thought he should. Maybe. And uh, to give you a little, you want a little example? <laughs> <laughs> well, we played a place. I'm glad uh, this isn't a new hour show. <laughs> Plenty of time, really. I, I thought somebody would have warned you about me. Oh, no, no, that. they told me nothing. I find they this. Didn't? Oh, no. Well, but okay. First, they said June is very reluctant to talk, and you'll have, and you'll have, you'll have to draw her out. But oh, first. No. Uh, we have to do a commercial. First. Well, oh, the commercial. But yeah. first wants his commercial in. Yeah, we'll do the commercial. <laughs> and then we'll come back and, and find out how you two uh, first met. Okay. <laughs> we'll be right back. So anyway, after all these trials and tribulations, he finally well, said, let's he, get married. Jo Johnny Cash straightened himself up, really, and, uh, and uh, he proposed to me on the stage in front of about 7,000 people in London, Ontario, Canada. Really? Yes. That's really romantic. It was. It was a lot of witnesses. A lot of witnesses. That's hard to back out of when Sca you've done it. scared me to death. Yeah. I kept saying, shut up. <laughs> and my mother was there, my sisters and the Statler brothers, and they kept saying, laughing at me, and I couldn't say anything. I didn't yeah. know what to say. And he just stood there and looked at me and grinned. Yeah. Uh, until I said something. And you said yes. I said yes. Yeah, good, good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> now that you're married to him, before you do something together, answer me, tell me this. Uh -huh. Now that you're married to him, do you call him Johnny Cash, or do you occasionally you call him Johnny? <laughs> Mm -hmm. No, I never call him Johnny. I call him John. John? Yeah, John. John. Hey, it's a, really, it's a pleasure to meet you. You're a lot Thank of fun. You. Really. Well, so are you. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, tomorrow night at 9.30 is a special. We'd love to have you do something together before you go. Would oh, you? that'd huh? be great. Thanks. We'd love to do it. Thank you. <laughs> Talking man. Oh, you big talking man. 
Cash. We'll take a break. We'll be right back with James Coburn. 